Hi, everyone, and welcome to another Clean Machine Live. I'm Jeff Palmer, CEO and founder of Clean Machine, a plant-based fitness nutrition company. Thank you for joining us on Amazon Live, Facebook Live at Clean Machine Fit, and on YouTube later after the broadcast at Clean Machine Online. This video is for informational purposes only and is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. So pretty amazing studies coming up, about, uh, coming out lately about the uh, incredible health benefits of uh, dark greens. Now we're gonna we're gonna talk about that, and and you're probably thinking, okay, why is a sports nutrition company talking about dark greens? Well, we're not just sports nutrition. Uh, Clean Machine is uh, just as the name imparts is about keeping this amazing machine that we're born into clean, healthy, running properly, because when certain parts of the body breaks down, then the rest of the body can't be as healthy, can't be as fit. So we are a plant-based fitness nutrition and fitness regards to not just muscle tissue, but liver tissue, heart tissue, and brain tissue. <laughs> All of these tissues need to function. We don't function as parts. We function as a whole. And when the parts break down, the whole can break down too as well. So for me, fitness is about whole health and nutrition, which is why I developed some amazing products that really try to address our whole health as well as get us the best fitness goals for our strength, for our muscle gains, for our body fat, our body composition, all of that together by addressing the body in a more holistic approach, looking at how the body works, helping it work better with the proper nutrition so that you can get the best health and fitness overall. So obviously the, the, the title of this one is a bit catchy uh, when you uh, pull it up on the screen there. <laughs> uh, we are, uh, uh, yeah, there we go. Um, so this is based on a really important study. And the name of the study is Nutrients and Bioactives in Green Leafy Vegetables and Cognitive Decline, a prospective study. So this one's really interesting because they looked at certain uh, phytonutrients, um, specifically uh, nutrients like um, uh, lutein and vitamin K. Um, these are rich in, in nutrients in dark green leafy vegetables. Actually, dark greens are some of the most nutrient dense plants on the planet. If you look at the top superfoods in the world, you look at moringa or uh, spirulina or uh, lentine, obviously, duckweed that is in our clean green protein. These are the most nutrient packed uh plants on the planet actually of all the foods we eat now fruits are actually really high in other bioactives polyphenols uh vitamins and minerals so the combination of getting lots of good whole fruits into your diet as well as dark greens give you the best chance at optimal health but we're going to take a look at this study and another study uh showing that these dark greens not only help with overall health, but they help improve our gut flora and through those metabolites actually help protect our brains. So let me let me read right from the study as I usually do. So the objective of this study was to increase understanding of the biological mechanisms underlying the association between our diet and our brain health. We investigated the individual relations to cognitive decline of the primary nutrients and bioactives in green leafy vegetables, including vitamin K1, lutein, beta carotene, nitrate, folates, camphorol, and alpha tocopherol, which is a vitamin E. So they looked at these nutrients, which are very high in greens and said, okay, let's look at a perspective. So let's look at a, a lengthy study and see how people did better based on what they were eating on average per day. 
Well, this is a direct quote from the study, and I'll read it to you. Quote, the decline rate, mental decline rate, the decline rate for those in the highest quintile of intake, that means those who ate the most greens. And this was just, <laughs> unfortunately, this is a sad state of uh, a sad commentary on U.S. diet right now, the highest quintile, the highest portion of people consuming uh, dark greens was 1.3 servings a day. That's it. But that was the highest range. So the, the decline rate for those in the highest range consuming just 1.3 servings a day was slower by the equivalent of being 11 years younger in age. Now that's phenomenal. If you want your brain to function like someone who is 11 years younger, all you have to do is eat one little serving of greens per day to get that reward. 11 years younger for one serving a day of greens. I mean, this should be it autopilot mechanism. We all should be consuming this. The benefits are just so huge. So, you know, the big reason is why? Well, greens sometimes don't taste all that good. Greens just start kind of, kind of be boring sometimes. Uh, greens, especially if you eat a large quantity, like a big salad can get you jaw tired. It's like, who's got time to prep all that stuff and things like that? Greens in the refrigerator can go bad, you know? So there's some challenges inherent in our modern society. When no one has time, everybody's doing fast foods or quick stuff, or just, we're just not getting enough dark greens in, into our diet. But for 11 years, a healthier brain, 11 years younger brain, dang, I'm taking that all day long <laughs> if I'm a betting man. So the conclusion of the study was consumption of approximately one serving a day of green leafy vegetables and foods rich in vitamin K1, that's the kind found in plants, not animals, lutein, uh, really rich in, uh, actually in lentine. Lentine is extremely high. Actually, lentine has more vitamin K than kale, which was generally considered the one of the top sources of vitamin K. Lentine's even higher in that in just one serving higher in lutein than uh, many of the other commonly uh, sourced lutein foods. Um, higher, high, good source of uh, folate too, which is uh, the natural version of folic acid. Um, so all these nutrients found in dark greens is amazing. But so why did they, you know, have such a positive impact? Well, it's twofold. One, when you're eating greens, you're not eating animal products. And two, the greens have a protective effect. So the animal products actually have a negative effect. So when you're consuming high animal proteins and high saturated animal fats, that actually can lead to a decline, mental decline. And look, you don't have to take my word for it. We're going to jump into the next study, but let me go ahead and, and post this uh, study. Um, uh, let's see. No, just a second. Private chat. Let me go ahead and post the first study for, for you guys to see it. Um, let's see. Here we go. All right. Uh, for those of you watching on Amazon Live, I'll just read the study out to you. For the rest of you, I'll put it up on the screen so you can see it and then um, and actually copy down the information. There we go, and I'll put it up on the screen. Oh, let's see. Uh, 
All right, there we go. Okay, so the study is nutrients and bioactives in green leafy vegetables and cognitive decline. That's the title of the study. It's a prospective study, and the link is up there on there too. You can copy it out of the chat box if you're seeing it on chat as well. Uh, but this, this was a big study showing tremendous results from just a single serving of uh, green leafy plants per day. Um, let me go ahead and take that uh, comment down so it's not distractive. And uh, so this next study I'm going to put up, and the study title really kind of says it all. And there we go. We're going to put this one up on the screen for you, too. So this is the next study I am going to talk about, which really kind of relates to, OK, so what is it? We know that we identified, hey, greens that are high in vitamin K, high in uh, lutein, and some other nutrients are very important. Fortunately, clean green protein with lentine, yeah, the lentine itself is the highest <laughs> in vitamin K, one of the highest of all plants in lutein. So you're getting a big dose of this of neuroprotective. Remember, I you can also check out my uh, previous uh, uh, talk on lutein and how neuroprotective of it. As a matter of fact, uh, out of all the uh, carotenoids, beta carotene being one of them, but it's in vitamin A group called carotenoids, lutein is a carotenoid. Out of all of the carotenoids, when the baby is in the womb, the baby's brain, the baby's body actually sucks up and has a preference for 60% of that to go to the brain. So all of this lutein is getting sucked up by the baby. Every time the mother consumes dark green leafy vegetables or orange uh, vegetables that are high in lutein, that goes right to the brain and stored in the brain. Why? It's because the baby is trying to protect its brain because it's about to be born into the world. So it's amazing. So this study is, this next study that I'm just going about to talk about is titled, and I'll read it for you, those watching on Amazon Live. The This study is called The Link Between Alzheimer's Disease and Gut Microbiota is Confirmed. This is a study, and I'm going to read right from the study, and, and this is the quote from the lead researcher. Our results are indisputable. Certain bacterial products of the intestinal microbiota are correlated with the quantity of amyloid plaques in the brain. Now, this is pretty powerful because this is showing a direct relationship with what we eat being broken down in our gut and these things that are being broken down, these metabolites, both from the, the bacteria that are consuming the high animal fats, right? When we consume a high fatty diet, the, the bacteria then start to try to break these down and create metabolites, waste byproducts, stuff that they poop out or, or recreate, but they also die and they die and leave these, what's called lipopolysaccharides or LPS. So this, this production of animal fats coming into our body produces this LPS, this lipopolysaccharides, which are associated with amyloid deposits in the brain. So what are amyloids? So the, the one, if you've, if you've done any research on uh, Alzheimer's disease, you'll know that amyloid and tau plaques are what are caused for uh, Alzheimer's disease. Uh, they will cause the, they, they wrap and form plaques, just like a plaque in the artery clogs the artery, plaques on the neurons keep them from firing or being able to communicate. And eventually those neurons die and shrink, right? Those, those dendrites on the ends of the neurons, they, they die. And this is the process of it, but it all starts in the gut and it all starts even before that in the mouth. So, Here's the amazing thing. <laughs> this study says, indeed, high blood levels of lycopolysaccharides, this is the LPS I was just talking about, from the consumption of animal fats, saturated animal fats, was associated with large amyloid deposits in the brain. So the more you're eating this cheeseburger and this milkshake, you're just piling up 
the amyloid plaques that are going to the brain. Now, how do they get to the brain? Shouldn't our gut stop that from happening, stop these waste byproducts from happening? Well, but uh, the high fat diet actually causes the, the permutations, the uptake in between ours to actually start to separate. This is called leaky gut syndrome or gut permeability. Now all these bigger molecules, these endotoxic LPS molecules can now get into the bloodstream. So the, the animal fat is doing two harms. One is creating all these negative things. And then two, it's actually opening up the doors of the gateway to your gut that allows these negative particles, these polysaccharides and endotoxins to get into the bloodstream. And this is this has actually been measured after just one meal of say a hamburger and french fries. I mean, that's, that's terrible. Uh, these specifically high animal proteins and fats causing the digestion, this bad bacteria to increase, creating a die off of the bad bacteria and parts of these dead pieces of the bad bacteria along with other metabolites are flooding into the uh, digestive tract into the bloodstream and then accumulating in the brain. And over time, this is how we're causing the brain damage, uh, the cognitive decline. Now, here's the good news. <laughs> here's the next sentence right after it says what is actually causing the amyloid deposits in the brain. They, it says, and I'm quoting, conversely, high levels of a short chain fatty acid called butyrate this only comes from plant fiber, was associated with less amyloid pathology. Remember, they're looking at people who are eating a standard American diet. So they're not looking at people who are only eating plants, right? So they're saying it's less pathology because the plants are actually inhibiting and blocking some of those negative effects from the animal products, high in saturated fats and, and animal proteins. These are negated by the health promoting effects of the plants. That's why just eating 1.3 servings of greens a day says such a powerful health protective benefit for the brain. So these nutrients like lutein are actually protecting the brain, but these fiber is being broken down in our gut and producing butyrates. So our fiber feeds, our, our good bacteria, feeds on fiber. Once they eat that fiber, they poop out a short chain fatty acid called butyrate. This butyrate is anti-inflammatory, where that LPS created by that animal fat is pro-inflammatory. It drives down the immune system. It explodes in inflammation in the gut, causes inflammation in our arteries and veins, and then causes the placking in our brains. So this is what we're doing when we're consuming an animal product. The good news is the more green plants you can consume in a day, even if you're on a standard American diet, even if you're consuming animal products, the health benefits can offset the negative benefits, both to the brain and your overall arterial health, cardiovascular health, by these nutrients that are in there, the polyphenols, the fiber being converted to butyrates, bringing down the inflammation, protecting it. Butyrates actually take that leaky gut and seal it back up again, help the body protect itself against that. So you have a barrier from any of these bad materials getting into the bloodstream. That's the way a proper functioning gut should work is by eating all these greens, you're getting that butyrate that actually causes that barrier there. Now the nutrients can get in, but the big macro endotoxins and the amyloid plaques and the tau tangled proteins that are uh, from this, these bad bacteria that are being, uh, that, are, that come from consuming animal proteins and animal fats. That's the difference here. So you have both the positive benefits of protecting the brain, healing the gut, and bringing down the inflammation. And then on the animal protein and fat side, you have, it's causing bad materials and endotoxins and LPS to be created. It's damaging the gut lining. So you have leaky gut and allowing that to get into the bloodstream, damaging the arteries, and then finally leading to uh, accumulation in the brain, which can lead to your dendrites dying and causing Alzheimer's and dementia, senile dementia, cognitive decline. That's how they could see in that first study I was talking about that just one serving of greens a day, so simple.
So just to recap, consuming saturated animal fats can cause gut dysbiosis. This is bad bacteria thriving, right? The more you consume animal proteins and animal fats, the higher the bad bacteria. Number two, consuming those animal fats causes gut permeability, allows all that negative particles that have been created by the bacteria to get into the bloodstream and into tissues like the brain and the heart. Number three, LPS is increased. Remember those lipopolysaccharides. This is happens when these bad bacteria thrive and bloom and then die off and then pieces of their, actually their outside cell wall, uh, get into, they're called lipopolysaccharides, get into there and help uh, increase the amyloid plaque buildup in the brain. And then finally, amyloid and tau proteins accumulating in the brain. So you can see that four-step process of how that consumption of that food, and all this happens in a single meal. It's not over years or over time. It's in a single meal we're measuring this happening. So it takes a while to damage because we, fortunately we've got a lot of brain cells and a lot of neurons, a lot of nerves, but uh, over time, that's why we're seeing uh, senile dementia happen at younger and younger ages. It's because of our diet. It's because, like this study pointed out, the highest consumption of, <laughs> of, of, of greens that we were seeing people eating was just one little over one serving a day. That's horrible. We should be eating three or four servings a day if you can, because they're so rich in protective nutrition. So on the good side, consuming plant fiber from greens improves and increases the good bacteria. So now you have good bacteria producing good metabolites that are protective. They seal up that uh, leaky gut uh, and improve the gut barrier. So bad particles from our digestive tract don't get into our bloodstream and damage the rest of our tissues. And they increase anti-inflammatory and immune strengthening butyrate. Now butyrate has been shown to actually elevate and upregulate our immune system. So especially right now in this age of COVID and viruses, we want to be consuming even more dark greens, even more fiber content. And remember fiber only comes from plants. There is zero fiber in any animal product eggs, dairy, uh, chicken, fish, meat, nothing of the animal kingdom has fiber in it. That is only created and only found in plants. So the only way you can get this protective butyrate, boosting your immune system, upregulating um, this, this amazing immunoglobulin called cathelicidin. Check out my video on uh, vitamin D3 and butyrate and see why that is so important for our overall immune health because this cathelicidin is actually what goes out. It's our own chemical that is produced by our body. When we consume fiber, it changes through our gut, a healthy gut, into butyrates, upregulates our immune system to produce more cathelicidin, and this cathelicidin goes over and destroys viruses in our body. That's how our immune system works. It destroys it, eats out the uh, envelope layer of the, uh, goes in and scrambles the DNA to, so that it can't replicate anymore, and then finally breaks it down, keeps it from um, actually binding and connecting all those spike proteins, actually prevents them from binding so they don't cause as much sick. That's what our own immune system does. And it's upregulated when we consume plant fiber. That fiber feeds our bacteria. The bacteria produce the, the butyrates and the butyrate upregulates our immune system. So that's why it's so important to get some of these greens in here, not just for the nutrients that are mentioned in that first article, but also this amazing fiber butyrate response too. Um, so, Let's tie this all back in. This is why when I was creating a protein, most of the proteins out on the market have all the nutrition stripped out of it. It's just isolated protein. Whey protein is just basically 80% protein, nothing else. You know, even the plant proteins that tried to mimic, uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, those proteins, a pea protein, 80% protein. So they stripped out all the fiber. They stripped out all the micronutrients, the lutein, the polyphenols, the chlorophyll, all this phytoprotective stuff that was helping protect our brains. And I said, that's the wrong way to get your protein in. And I really wanted to change the way the protein industry addresses this and said, okay, 
I want to, for me, I want the healthiest source of plant protein out there in the market. And that's when I found Lentine. I worked with this company for a year before they even came to market, watched them build their aqua farm and bring this. I was the very first to bring this to market. And we won the next award as a top supplement award in the United States for best supplement of the year. It is not only the best source of protein for the plant kingdom, but it is the most nutrient dense green plant we have found, even containing vitamin B12. Yes, bioactive vitamin B12. And this has been proven in multiple published uh, human studies where they show that the B12 is actually even uh, being converted in the gut while you're digesting it. So it is true bioactive B12 in the plant. So the plant has roots in the water and normally a plant would be in the ground and the B12 producing bacteria would have a symbiotic relationship with them in the soil. Actually, the plant will send nutrients down into the soil and into the soil to feed the bacteria, to attract the bacteria over to the plant so they can have this symbiotic relationship. Now, when you have a water plant though, that water plant is floating around so its roots aren't sunk into soil where it can carry on that symbiotic relationship with microorganisms in the soil. So what the plant did was say, well, since it's so difficult to get in touch with the microbes that we need, let's just go ahead and suck the microbes up. So the B12 producing bacteria, the B12 is only produced by these bacteria. Animals don't produce it. You do not get B12 from animals. You get them from the bacteria. Now you can feed the bacteria to the or the B12 itself to the animal and get it from there. But yes, it doesn't come from there. But this actually, the bacteria gets sucked up into the root system and it forms little nodules, little condos for the B12 to live in, uh, B12 producing bacteria to live in. And then we take actually the whole plant, the root, the stem, the leaf, the flower, everything, and, and bunch it down and, and put it into the thing. And yes, the B12 is still bioactive. Actually, all three forms of the bioactive B12 are in the plant. So this is an incredible plant that gives you the B12 for your brain health. Lutein, and look up lutein and brain. There's lots of new studies out there. It's amazing how neuroprotective lutein is for the brain. We know that um, some other nutrients actually store in the brain. Uh, curcumin is one of them, turmeric. And we can see that by people with high amounts of consumption of turmeric or curcumin actually have yellowing in the brain because, uh, because it's actually storing in the brain. The brain loves it, soaks it up and holds it for a lifetime. It does the same with lutein. It soaks up lutein and holds it for a lifetime. They actually show a cumulative effect. So the more you're eating dark greens, the more you're getting lutein into your system, the more protected your brain is from damaging issues, from cognitive decline. So, you know, when I was out there, I said, okay, there's got to be a way to help people get this one serving of greens in them so you can have a brain that functions well well into your 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and beyond. That's what I want for me. That's what I want for you. So I said, let's make this easy. With all those challenges of people not really liking kale or no time for drinking smoothies or whatever, this was easy. Stick a scoop of this in a glass of water or in a smoothie, and boom, you can get one, two, three servings of greens. Easy, drink it, and you're done for the day. I add some blueberries and strawberries for even more chemoprotective effects, uh, neuroprotective effects in the brain, and then make this amazing green fruit smoothie and start my day out with that. Give my brain a good wake up in the morning, make sure it's well protected from all the stressors that I'm gonna count for the day. And that's how I start my day every day. I hope you've enjoyed this. These are two amazing studies showing us both the long-term effects of consuming greens, the uh, the actual effects that are going on in our gut and why animal products versus plant products animal products are causing the cognitive decline and even alzheimer's and dementia and how plants can actually reverse or protect against that effect um, just by consuming more plants especially dark greens in your diet and I've made it real easy for you to get a great serving of not only your dark greens, your polyphenols, your omega-3s, all in the whole food plant. This is not added. This is all in a whole food plant. So you're getting the whole plant, 
All it is removed is the water. It's just dehydrated and powdered and put in there. So you're getting all of that nutrition on the richest sources of vitamin K on the planet. Um, so they've even seen that vitamin K has neuroprotective, indirect neuroprotective effects too as well. Check out the studies on vitamin K1 and its neuroprotective effects in the brain. So really important uh, to get your greens in. No matter how you do it, try to get at least a good salad or some dark greens in. And if you're in too busy a day, there is clean green protein with lentine, the richest source of uh, nutrients, the number one superfood, more nutrient dense than any other green on the planet, higher than kale, spinach, spirulina, chlorella, all of them. Uh, total nutrient density. When you look at omega-3s, polyphenols, vitamins, minerals, and fiber, as well as protein content, higher than any plant. So giving you the best for your overall health and fitness, that's what I'm looking for for you. And that's why I brought forth Clean Green Protein with Lentin. Hope you've enjoyed this one. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next year. Next week. <laughs>